It's like painting the Golden Gate Bridge. You just start at one end, and when you get to the other, you turn around and do it again. It's just, as soon as something goes into use, before it goes into use, we sanitize it. After it goes into use, we clean it, re-sanitize, store it sanitized. Okay, you just heard from our experts about how they got into brewing. Now we're going to hear all about keeping your brew tools clean and why it's so important. Then we'll get into the specifics of what you need to brew. Well, in, in brewing beer sanitation, is, it's your number one concern. Um, you can't sterilize, but, but we can do our best to sanitize. So we, we knock out the, the best we can with our um, sanitizing agents to prevent any sort of wild yeast growth. Or We want our yeast to get a, a, a fresh start and have their opportunity to make the best possible beer possible. On the brewing side, on the hot side, we use um, caustic, sodium hydroxide, and that is, um, it's like when you touch bleach, where it's like your fingers are super slimy. It's that kind of a, uh, a cleaning agent. It attacks the proteins, it gets it out of the kettle, and as well as the fermenters, the, uh, the scum from the fermentation and the, and the, the resins from the hops. We also use a uh, phosphoric nitric acid on the cold side. That knocks off the beer stone. That's what builds up while it sits in the uh, bright tanks. And then for um, general line cleaning and um, hoses and whatnot, we use a parasitic acid. It's like a, it's like a hydrogen peroxide, and it, it oxidizes and it kills the anaerobic bacteria. So there's no, no, no carryover of flavor. We will do a full, a full rinse, caustic rinse test for residue. And then um, if there's no caustic residue, it's running off as clear rinse water, then we'll, um, we'll go into the next brand. Uh, sanitation for us begins with making a batch of sanitizer. It's always helpful to have a reservoir of sanitizer on hand because uh, you never know when you're going to need it. Um, and it's typically when you're going to have uh, something clean in one hand and something dirty in another hand and you need to make them somehow come together and it's always helpful to have a big reserve of it. So we use a big tank that we fill full of sanitizer with every batch. Uh, most sanitizers are parasitic acid based, uh, which is a contact sanitizer, low foam. We use it in spray bottles and that way you can put it on anything, just spray it wherever. Other places we use alcohol um, as a finishing sanitizer. Um, the general process for sanitation is just to make sure that all surfaces that are going to contact wort or um, other wort pro things that will touch the wort in the cold phase, um, those have to be meticulously sanitized and before you even do that you need to make sure that they are scrupulously clean. Um, otherwise you're just, it's, it's not even a good band-aid. <laughs> can't come up with a good metaphor for that. Uh, but they, it has to be really clean, otherwise you're just, you're, you're not really gonna properly sanitize. It's gonna be a waste of time. A visual inspection of cleaning is always good before you even begin sanitization procedures. Uh, your beer will get infected, you'll get mold in the beer, um, or mold in your lines, and it's just a, a problem you need to, you'll see later down the line. Um, at a larger scale, you almost, don't need to worry about it as much, but you need to worry about it more because you have more on the line. Um, a home brewer's batch, because it's so small, um, can get infected much more quickly than a large-scale batch would be. Plus, we all we have the benefit of using a lot of yeast. Um, we can typically pitch at much higher rates than a home brewer sometimes would, because we have larger pitches available to us, and that would waylay any microbial bacterial growth uh, uh, more than a home brewer would have. But if we lose a batch, a brewery can lose several hundred dollars to into the hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, if they have poor sanitation practices. And we have reputations on the line. A home brewer can silently dump the beer down the drain and not think twice about it other than, damn, I wake wasted a Saturday. But <laughs> It's a hard lesson that everyone needs to learn. So when you want to make a batch of beer, what you need to start with is your hops, your water, your malt, and your yeast. And um, they're all important. And viability of the yeast is critical because if you've got a, a fatigued yeast, 
it's not going to come out of the gate strong and you're going to get a beer that, that doesn't finish right. You'll, you'll taste it, um, either an under, under attenuated beer or some off flavors from stress on the yeast. 